Hello, my name is Jackie von Zifferberg, and I'm the director of the Solution Focused Institute of South Africa. I've been interviewing prominent solution focused therapists for their views and insights on solution focused therapy. Today, I'm very excited because I have my friend and colleague Elliot Connie on the line. Elliot is an inspirational lecturer. He's a gifted therapist and an asset to the solution focused family. Elliot is also the chairman of the Association of Solution Focused Practitioners and he's the director of the Connie Institute. Elliot is the editor of the book called The Art of Solution Focused Therapy and he is the author of two great solution focused books, Solution Buildings for Couples and The Solution Focused Marriage. Elliot, I'm so glad to have you here today. I know you're very busy and you've been traveling all over the world and finally you and I got the right time to sit down and have a chat. So welcome, Elliot. Thank you, thank you, I'm really excited. Elliot, I've got a few questions I'd like to pose to you today about couples therapy. Um, okay. uh, your book, Solution, Focus, Solution Building for Couples, um, in the book you write that there is a different language that one uses for solution building um, versus the language that describes problem. What do you mean by that, Elliot? Well, <clears throat> whenever you ask somebody or uh, kind of invite somebody to talk about the problem, you're gearing the conversation in one specific uh, direction. And with couples, what makes that such a challenge is most of the time when couples come to therapy, they have two different ideas about the origin and solution to a problem. Uh, for example, if I ask any married couple, like what brought you into therapy, um, the answers are usually quite divergent. So one person will say, you know, we're here because I caught my partner having an affair. And the other person will say, well, I had an affair because my partner ignored me and I felt neglected. So we're, we're already on two different paths. Yeah. But if we invite people to talk about a preferred future or talk about uh, a desired outcome, then very quickly we get kind of on the same page and that starts the conversation very differently. So if I ask that same couple, what do you hope to get out of therapy? The, the answers are usually convergent. So they'll say things like, you know, we want to be happy again like we used to and, and we want to be, um, we want to get past this trying time or we, we want to get back to being right for each other in whichever ways would matter to that particular couple. And that's a completely different conversation than the problem descriptive uh, kind of orientated uh, uh, conversation that most clinicians would have other than us. That's right, Elliot, because most, most clinicians are quite scared of couples. Um, most clinicians steer away from couples therapy because couples launch into this problem talk and the blaming game. So how do you keep the conversation productive between couples and prevent this blaming game from happening? Well, it goes back to your first question. If, if I'm having a conversation about a person's desired outcome from therapy, then those blaming games don't take place. Be it, it, it's just like a, uh, uh, like a fire, you know, if there's no environment appropriate for a fire, there won't be a fire. And if I can have a conversation with a couple about their desired outcome, the environment is not appropriate for blame. In fact, the environment is appropriate for credit and compliments right instead of blaming and insults. So if we start having a conversation about what do you hope to get out of therapy, and let's say a couple says to be happy again, and I ask questions like, in your pre previous iteration of happiness, what did each of you do to contribute to that happiness happening? All of a sudden, instead of blaming each other for a problem, we're giving credit and compliments for the presence of the previous happiness, and that gives us something to build a conversation with. And uh, they're just two very different things. I think you're 100% right. Most couples therapists don't want to do couples therapy. Uh, most people try to avoid having conversation with people who are pissed off. And in couples therapy, someone's usually pissed off. Yeah. And if I can have a conversation with people about the desired outcome, they become the better version of themselves. And nothing is more enjoyable to me than that. I mean, that's, that's what drives me. I mean, that's what motivates me. You've often said that what inspires you about couples is that they do have a successful past. 
and that you can build on that successful path. Mm. Can you share a bit with us how you find a couple's successful path? Sure, you ask them about it. I mean, <laughs> um, couples are just it's amazing. There's nothing in the world like li watching someone describe the presence of their love while they're in the presence of their partner. And, and most people don't ask the type of questions that we ask as they start talking about those loving emotions. Like, for example, if I ask a couple, how did you meet? Most people just mean like, where did you meet, right? Like, how did you meet? Oh, I met her in college. But, but I want to know what made you create a relationship with this person? What did you do to facilitate the relationship's growth? As the relationship was growing, what did you do to make it slightly easier on your partner to fall in love with you? You. As you were falling in love with your partner, how did you let your partner know that you were doing so? As you were falling in love, what clues did the two of you get to let you know you were doing something right for yourselves? And how on earth did this love grow to such a degree that you'd be together 10, 15, 20 years down the road? As you fell in love, how did you know that building a family would be the right thing to do? These type of questions reignite the fire for each other that we often don't, don't think about. Elliot, you're very curious about what people do and what skill they have to build a relationship. Yes. And your questions seem to ignite the skills that people have forgotten that they have to, to work towards a, 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 a healthy relationship. Yes. Do you find that couples are a little bit confused when you ask them that because they come into couples therapy expecting to um, for the therapist to be the mediator and yet right. you're asking them to remember and re-remember all the skills and all the things they did to make it work right. um, you know that's a good question i don't know i don't know if they're confused i've never really thought about it um they pro probably are i would say and and you know, looking back, I've worked with couples that, that have been kind of taken aback by my line of questioning. But to me, it doesn't matter whether they're confused or not. I, I, I'm going to ask them these questions because I think they're useful. They're useful questions and they're productive in terms of where it leads counseling to go. Um, but you're right. I mean, couples come into therapy expecting a mediator. They come into therapy expecting uh, a problem description. They come into therapy expecting pain. And I have worked with many couples over the years that have been surprised at the nature of the conversation we had, but pleasantly surprised yeah. because they walk out yeah. feeling a certain way. You know, funny, I saw a couple like three or four years ago, and it was a couple where one of the partners, there was infidelity present. I mean, it was a pretty trying, challenging couple. And uh, I saw them like three or four times. I saw them again last week for a completely different issue. And the woman said that when she came to couple to therapy previously, one of the things that made it challenging was she would walk out of each session feeling really good about her partner, and she didn't want to, <laughs> right? She, she was saying, I didn't want to feel good, but every time we had this conversation, I was feeling good until three weeks later, I just had to submit and realize I feel good. Once I realized I felt good, there was no need for therapy because he and I went on about our lives happily. And Elliot, you've often said, you want to talk to the best version of that person. You want to talk to the best version of the husband, the best version of this woman as the wife. Yes. And, and, and clients are, are pleasantly surprised when they start talking about themselves in that manner. Yes. Agreed. Elliot, you, 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 one thing you have taught me is to help establish a destination and that goals are really everything and that we work based on what the client wants. Yes. Tell me a little bit about establishing a destination because I would call it setting a goal and you would call it finding a destination for a couple. Right. I, <clears throat> I tend to stay away from the, the word goal because goal has an implication that it can't really be changed. And um, I, I like the, the phrasing of destination a lot better because if a couple wants to change the direction they're headed, they can simply state that change. And I want people to know that therapy is flexible. Um, but I, I mean, I can't do therapy without knowing where we're going. Just like a cab driver can't do, uh, can't go anywhere without knowing where you're going. Just like when I was in South Africa going on a safari, 
the the safari guides couldn't do anything in the, until we told them what animal they wanted us to track. So in a lot of ways, I've used solution-focused conversations like that. Like, I can't do anything unless you tell me where I'm taking my, my cab. I can't do anything until you tell me what animal you want me to be tracking. And I can't do anything until you tell me your desired outcome for your marriage. And our job as therapists is to keep asking questions and uh, that elicit where they want to go. Yeah, yeah, because it's not always easy for people. Yeah. I mean, they've come to therapy so so kind of steeped in the problem story that it's not easy for them to come up with answers to this question of how would you like your relationship to look in the future. But it's my job as a therapist to be disciplined and ascertain that answer before I do anything else. And that's our responsibility as therapists, to stay focused on what the client wants. And Absolutely, 100% right, I agree, to, to I totally agree. to take them where they want to go. Yeah, totally agree. Because you're right, some clients really don't know where they want to go. They just know what's going well, wrong. I wouldn't say that they don't know. I would say that they hadn't spent a lot of time thinking about it because they've been so steeped in the problem. I think they know, they just haven't been pushed to think about it. So, Elliot, if you had to to give advice to a, a becoming couples therapist, somebody out there that is now starting to work with couples, what, what one thing would you like them to know about building solutions with couples? Um, I would like them to keep trying, keep at it. Uh, I, it, it kind of, it's a sensitive topic for me that so many professionals don't want to work with couples because I think the greatest thing we're ever going to do in our lives is fall in love. So a pro profession that helps people fall in love or, or, or maybe more, more specifically re-fall in love, um, any professional that's, that's learning to do this work, I would want to encourage them to keep at it and keep trying and stick with it. Uh, because once you watch a couple fall back in love, your life is never the same. Like you, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be touched in your core, I think. Elliot, I really want to thank you for sharing with us. I really want to thank you for taking some time out of your busy schedule um, and sharing all your insight on building solutions with couples with us. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you for having me. This was a joy, Jackie. So if you'd like more information, you can join us on our Facebook page, the Solution Focused Institute of South Africa, or you can follow us on Twitter at FFI Future Focused.